The Motion Picture Association of America wields tremendous power in the film industry. Most major theatre chains will refuse to screen movies that haven't been rated by the MPAA, or which have been assigned the dreaded NC-17, meaning no minors, no matter what. Naturally, this system incentivizes both studios and filmmakers to satisfy the ratings board's standards. But the anonymity and sometimes inscrutable logic of the MPAA has led to a number of controversies. Here are the films that were slapped with ratings that were too strict, too lenient, or just plain strange. Hunchback's Hypocrisy Disney's animated output between the late 80s and early 90s is referred to as a renaissance, for good reason. Beginning with The Little Mermaid and culminating with The Lion King, their films racked up critical praise, box office returns, and recognition unheard of in decades. Then, in 2001, Atlantis The Lost Empire ushered in the era of PG being the norm for Disney. But just before the turn of the millennium, the hunchback of Notre Dame snuck through with a pretty inappropriate G. But I'd never fit in out there. I'm not... Although the studio streamlined the dense original story from the 1831 novel, the villain still confessed his lustful passions in prayer during the Hellfire musical number. Some parents expressed concern, but not enough to hold Hunchback back from financial success. A Harrowing Hobbit As the final film in Peter Jackson's two Middle Earth trilogies, The Hobbit – The Battle of the Five Armies holds a singular place in film history. Each Lord of the Rings and Hobbit film has received an extended edition that includes more material from Tolkien's books than its theatrical counterpart. You think your life is worth more than theirs? When there is no love in it, there is no love in you. The first five of these maintained their original theatrical rating of PG-13, but Battle of the Five Armies' bonus 20 minutes of footage got an R, an oddly severe rating, given that Hobbit fans had likely already seen Return of the King's depictions of severed heads being flung by catapult. The Two Dark Knight One case of outrage over a movie's rating was so severe it altered the course of an entire multimedia franchise. Tim Burton's Batman became an instant pop culture landmark in 1989 by presenting a more serious take on the caped crusader. But many thought his second outing went too far. I am Catwoman. Hear me roar. Batman Returns bears the same PG-13 rating as its predecessor, but its script introduced a heavy innuendo and psychosexual themes. And then there was the Penguin, who had a tendency to ooze black bile. According to Den of Geek, the backlash made serious waves at Warner Brothers, and the reins to the next Batman adventure would be handed over instead to Joel Schumacher, who delivered the bright neon action of Batman Forever. Babe's Barnyard Carnage George Miller may be known for his Mad Max movies, but he's also made significant diversions into Family Fair with the Happy Feet and Babe series. The latter was a whimsical fable with a heartwarming ending, but its G rating masks some surprisingly dark content. I want my mom. True to Miller's style, Babe's themes run deeper than meets the eye. Mortality looms over the barnyard, with most of the characters reminding Babe that his purpose is to be devoured by his human bosses. The Academy Awards even took note of Babe's mature themes, nominating it for seven honours, including Best Picture. Psycho Sexuality It was nearly impossible for American Psycho to not cause controversy. One part of me wants to take her out and talk to her, be real nice and sweet and treat her right. And what the other part of him think? <laughs> what her head would look like on a stick. According to Variety, the film initially received a rating of NC-17. Weirdly enough, though, what pushed it past the R wasn't the graphic and gleeful murdering committed by Christian Bale's character, but a single, non-violent sex scene. Director Mary Harron explained why she found the rating objectionable, saying that Bateman is looking at himself in the mirror and not at his partners seems to be an issue for the MPAA, but his expression sums up his frighteningly detached relationship to the world around him. Rating the reality of Bully Documentaries present a unique challenge to the MPAA, but no rating caused more of an uproar than 2011's documentary Bully. I feel kind of nervous going to school because I like learning, but I have trouble with making friends. Director Lee Hirsch made the film to feature issues faced by American children, but the MPAA declared Bully an R for language, meaning the demographic depicted in the documentary would be unable to see it without a parent, and schools would be unlikely to host screenings. According to Cinema Blend, Michigan high school student Katie Butler launched a Change.org petition that amassed over half a million signatures protesting the rating. Still, the MPAA refused to budge. Hirsch eventually prepared a PG-13 version that toned down the language. The original cut was also released, but limited to theatres willing to screen unrated films. A Wilder Bunch 
In 1995, Warner Brothers prepared a director's cut of Sam Peckinpah's 1969 classic, The Wild Bunch, that restored 10 minutes of material trimmed from the original release for time. Relax, it's just some champagne we ordered. An SFGate review praised the new release, saying, The restored material does not call attention to itself. It was there in the first place, and it fits right in. But while The Wild Bunch was rated R in 1969, the MPAA slapped the director's cut with an NC-17. Respected filmmakers fought the revisionist rating, citing the fact that the NC-17 would limit the film's availability. The MPAA eventually relented to an appeal from Warner Brothers and released the director's cut with an R, but the incident still stands as an example of the ratings board's imperfection. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.